Hello people, this is Socrates' son. Uh, Brother Dawa responded to a video I made about him. He calls refuting absurdity uh, refutation of a not-so-intelligent atheist. Um, yeah, okay, let's go to the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So today I will be refuting this Socrates' son video. Socrates' son's video um, regarding me. He challenges me. Challenge to Brother Dawa. Islam nece- necessitates determinism. Okay, so there's a, there's a funniest part. He just says, Islam does Islam necessitate determinism? That's a challenge to me. So, in his own video, he puts the title that does Islam necessitate determinism. So, let's look into that. What What is determinism? Let's go, if you go to encyc- Encyclopedia, of uh, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, they give a uh, an nearly all-encompassing definition, and it, it goes as follows: Determinism. The word is governed by determinism. Okay, the world is governed by determinism. If and only if, given a specified way, things are at a time t. The way things go thereafter is a fixed as a matter of natural law. Now, if we skip to twelve minutes and 48 seconds of um, his Logic video. Logic rejects are, humans for- being responsible for their actions in an absolute sense. Even if we have free will, at best is partial free will. By no doubt, our environment and our natural predispositions, our physiology in other words, defines the bulk of our will. Conclusion. Muslims at best can be partially deterministic still deterministic. there you go you see uh, he himself says that muslims at best can be par- partially deterministic but still deterministic there is no issue with that we can believe some things are deterministic but we are not determinist because determinism is the philosophical position that everything is governed or uh, is due to some is determined by something previous to it okay if you're partially deterministic you're not a determinist you are a soft determinist okay you're a soft or you are a inter determinist even compatibilist okay people can be partially determinist okay for example compatibilist are partial determinist he made a good point first he accepts my premise that even if we have free will at best is partial free will but then he says Muslims can be compatibilist, soft, in, other, in other words, soft determinist, not contradicting this. Yet, as I said later on in my video, the environmental factors and the factors relating to human physiology definitely can determine whether someone becomes Muslim. And I presented the religion distribution maps to prove this point. This, pro- this point is proven. That, that in combination with the weight Islam, Islamic theology gives to someone being Muslim for salvation, okay, these two in combined either overstate compatibilism. Those two factors combined overstates compatibilism. So, how can Allah judge for something he is responsible for? Islam refuted. Moreover, Islam is not even compatibilist. Islam is heart determinist, as we will see in the Hadith. So, but at least you made a you made a good point but they uh, believe in free will and they are compatibilist they are they do not fall under compatible uh, they do not fall under determin- determinist so compatible if compatibilists are not determinist and compatibilism means that they can believe in partial determinist and they can be partial determ- deterministic then muslims are compatibilist not determinist religious distribution maps prove that the environmental factors and our physiology, in other words, the non-free will factors, 
with no doubt can determine whether we become Muslims. That's proven. Okay? Even if in some extreme cases, Islamic theology tolerates people not being Muslims for salvation, like for example Eskimos never heard of Islam in Antarctica, the non-free will factors in combination with Islamic theology with no doubt can determine whether someone ends in hell. So even in the compatibilism hypothesis, Allah judges for something he is responsible for. Therefore, Islam disproven, because Allah is not just or merciful. And he himself gives the definition of causes. So if by your de- de- and if, I, if you're saying that all events and then you're saying that uh, you're giving the definition of determinism as all events and then you're saying that Muslims can be partially deterministic, then you're refuting yourself here, bro. So if a Muslim has to be deterministic, it is not the same that he is partially deterministic because if a Muslim is deterministic and he falls under determinism, then it's clearly the case that all events and causes. So he cannot be a partial determinist and then, you know, be a and it cannot be that he can be partially deterministic and then Islam necessitates determinism because determinism is all events, not partial, all events. Yet, even in, in a compatible world, 99% of Afghanis are Muslims. And even in a compatible world, 99% of Greeks are Orthodox Christian. Now, given the gravity Islam gives being a Muslim for salvation, okay, which is like, uh, unless you are an Eskimo, you need to be a Muslim to be saved. Okay, Given that gravity and that kind of percentages, it doesn't matter. Even in a compatibilist world, the determined stuff are more than enough, more than enough to determine whether someone goes in hell or not. Okay, so you are underestimating my argument. That is what you... You just took the first part of my argument. I mean, you really thought it would have been that easy to defeat someone like me, for example. You didn't know. I mean, let's imagine an imaginary world in some other dimension that you can defeat me in some, in any argument. It would have been so easy. I mean, come on, come on, dude. You are underestimating my argument. That was just the intro of my argument. Then I gave the maps. Then I advanced my argument. Then there is a second part of my argument, proving that you are not even compatibilist. Go to your hadith. You are... Definitely, you are determinist. And all that, even if we assume free will exists, which, no, it doesn't. If all that, even if we assume free will exists. Okay, please. And the best part is that right above his comment, there was another comment where a brother asked me, uh, he, brother, I have a confusion. Uh, okay, so uh, he asked me, so basically we Muslims are compatibilist and not hard determinist. Okay, then I said, we believe in destiny, not hard determinism. We believe in destiny, not hard determinism. So he is quoting the tweets and I am quoting the tweets as well. We Muslims believe in, uh, we don't believe in hard determinism, simple as that. So I don't see his position. What is he trying to say? And then I also say that you can be, okay, we believe in destiny, not hard determinism and uh, comparabilism. What I wanted to say here was compatibilism, of course, but it is, but not the best way to describe yourself. Okay. So it is not best to describe yourself as compatibilist either. Okay. But we are definitely not hard determinist. It's pretty simple. Yet the book of destiny, Al-Qadr, contradicts what you are saying. So let's see. You will address the verse, the hadith verses, which are fifty-four. Okay, you don't. Of course, you don't need to address fifty-four verses. Just address some of the verses I posted to you, and let's see 
whether it's it's free will or uh, compatible is or determinism. Let's see. Because that is just not what uh, Al Qadr and Al Aim is. So you saying that because of Al Qadr uh, we have no free will? It is just a non secular because it does not follow. Uh, same thing. Just cause something is gestion doesn't mean that it is uh, forcing you to do something. So that is just false. Okay, so he is quoting from Kitab al Qadr, uh, which is once again Qadr. Qadr does not necessarily is Jabr. Okay, just cause something you know is Qadr gestion. It does not necessarily force because destiny is decided by Allah's knowledge. Okay, so whatever Allah knew is gestion. That's just how it is. As God is all knowing and He is perfect knowledge, then whatever is within God's knowledge is destiny. There is no force on. There is no force on His creation from His knowledge or destiny. Okay, and this this guy that has no idea about hadith science. Just cause if you reject Sahih Muslim hadith doesn't mean you reject all hadith. It will just mean you reject Sahih Muslim's hadith. Okay, then he talks about this hadith. Okay, um, in which he points out, he begins to uh, in either distance, a cubit distance away from paradise, when suddenly the writing of destiny overcomes him, and he begins to act like the remains, uh, the uh, denizens of hell, and thus enters hell. But if you continue that hadith, okay, and another one acts in the way that of the denizens of hell until there there remains between the him and hell a distance of cubit, then the that the writing, okay, that the writing of destiny overcomes him, and then he begins to act like the person of paradise and enters paradise so you can clearly see uh, first of all that um, both people of hell and heaven um, are overcome if you want to say this uh, destiny but what does it mean to overcome this destiny first of all like i said destiny does not have any causal power because destiny does not cause anything destiny is just something that is written because if you go to another hadith okay which is very good before we go to another hadith, what it says here? When suddenly destiny overcomes. Okay. And you begin to act like the people of hell. What? Let me repeat that. When dest then destiny overcomes. That is determinism. Either this hadith is wrong. Okay, either th this hadith is wrong, God doesn't know how to speak, or maybe some hadith narrator did a mistake. Either this is determinism. There is no third op option. Because it says, then the, the destiny overcomes the will of the person. Destiny overcomes. That's determinism, my friend. Okay, so... The first hadith goes with what I say, not with what you say. Compatibilism and this kind of stuff. That's strong determinism. Okay, let's go to the next hadith. Uh, yep, here we go. In this hadith, um, uh, Sahih Muslim 2644. Okay, so very close to the hadith that he quotes. Okay, in the end it says, and his deeds and actions, his deaths and his livelihood, these are all recorded. Then his documents of destiny is rolled and there is no addition nor sub subtraction from it. So destiny has already been made, already been written and that it is rolled. Okay, and this is talking about, you know, uh, before his birth. So his destiny is, is written before his... It, it was burned. Uh, burned. <laughs> Sorry. B born. So his destiny is written before he was born. But that's not the terminus. What is that? Compatibilism, maybe. <laughs> what is the definition? The, the, what happened with me today? <laughs> what is the definition of the word destiny? What is the definition? So his destiny was written before he was born. But that's what, what exactly? Determinism. Uh, anyway, let's continue. So how come something that is written before his birth, okay, that is rolled up, cause? See, it doesn't cause. What it means is that this knowledge, uh, it, it is emphasizing that um, even if somebody is doing good, okay, whatever is destined for, for him, he will end up doing it. 
he cannot go against it it is he will end up doing it he will choose himself to do it but he will still end up doing it let's see the definition of destiny is what you say like we know the future let's see destiny the events that will necessarily happen to a particular person or thing in the future the hidden power believed to control future events fate that is the definition of destiny not knowing the future this is what it means uh, you cannot go against your destiny in the sense that whatever you're going to choose Allah already knows what you're going to choose and he has written your destiny according to it there is no jabber here there's no force here he needs to prove some kind of force just because you found a stupid apologetic name or not stupid an intelligent apologetic named compatibilism just because you found this apologetic in order to continue to be a muslim contrary to the evidence that doesn't mean the evidence comply with compatibilism okay the name of the book you are reading is destiny go see the definition of what is destiny it's not what you are saying either way what you are saying is self contradictory to the verses okay even what you are saying now that just god just knows the future no that's not what the verses are saying okay please continue because if for example you can go to tafsir or something else but if i go to let's say an urdu translation of the hadith he he's quoting from an english and here is an urdu translation of the hadith so yes here we go um yeah aur aur jannat ke darmiyan ek barsh ke fasle reh jata hai to allah ke ilm ke mutabik is written in brackets uh, allah ke ilm ke mutabik according according to al uh, allah's uh, knowledge likha hua usse us par ghalib aa jata hai okay so according to allah's knowledge whatever is written okay it it becomes ghalib okay it becomes uh, it you can say overcomes him uh, now this guy uh, puts a, a, up a urdu translation of the hadith that still still agrees with me still <laughs> even the urdus even the urdus agrees with me this guy keeps pulling up things that agree with me okay please continue ya ta hai to wo ahl jahannam ke amal ke liye amal kar leta hai so basically what it means according to allah's knowledge he starts doing what was destined for him okay that's that's what it means doesn't it doesn't say it forces him so let's said allah's messenger should we not then depend upon our destiny and abandon our deeds thereupon he said acts of everyone will be facilitated in that which has been created for him so that whoever belongs to the company of the blessed will have good works made easier for him and whoever belongs to the unfortunate ones will have evil acts made easier for him belongs so people belong to to paradise or hell they belong and evil acts or good acts will will be made will be made easier for them okay that's not free will okay and then he just said they belong that's not free will easier it will be made easier for them that's not free will just cause a scenario is made easier for you still have a choice to do it or don't do it that's free will okay if you belong okay you belong by your deeds so allah already knows who is going to do the good deeds and who will end up in paradise and those people by allah's knowledge he knows that they belong in paradise wait if allah says that i belong to hell without i was born with before i was born okay Allah is a baby me it just happened to be a beautiful baby okay and he says wow what that baby is very beautiful and he took me to pythia like uh, pythagoras and pythagoras uh, pythia th- said the greek oracle said this baby will be the most important man that ever lived that's why we will call him socrates son anyway Okay, let's let's say Allah sees a baby, me. 
And he says, this baby belongs to hell. And then he makes easier, he, he makes easier for me the bad deeds. That's, what's that? What's that? Free will. Compatible is maybe. That's God. Compatible is my friend. Means that, okay, we don't have free will. The environment makes things. But now we see God putting his hand. Making things easier. Okay. That is, that is not compatible. That is not free will. So you still have free will. And you still belong. And you still, and Allah made something easier for you. See, it's absurd arguments, bro. Very bad arguments. Okay, and then he talks about this hadith. Abu Harairah reported Allah's messenger as saying, There was argument between Adam and Moses. Moses said to Adam, You are our father. You did us harm and caused us to get out of paradise. Adam said to him, You are Moses. Allah selected you for direct conversation and wrote with his own hand the book for you. Despite this you blame me for an act which Allah had ordained for me 40 years before he created me? You blame me for an act which Allah has ordained for me 40 years before he created me. Okay, let's continue. Um, but he chooses a specific hadith, which is not complete hadith, uh, because in Sahih Muslim there is also this hadith that's talk about the same scenario, which goes that... Um, Okay. Now, what is your opinion? How long this is Adam saying? What is your opinion? How long Torah would have, uh, would he between written before I was created? Moses said, forty years before Adam. Before Adam said, did you not see those words? Adam committed an error and he was enticed to do so. He Moses said, yes. Whereupon he Adam said, uh, the, do you then blame me for an act that which Allah has ordained for me forty years before He even created me? So it is talking about um, he was in, enticed and it was an error. So it's not like he was forced. He, he still had a choice. And for this, as he was enticed, uh, enticed and he was an error, uh, for this he, he says that, uh, do you still blame me? So you can see that he, he come, uh, Owl is repre- uh, Socrates' son is re- repre- misrepresenting our position here. That- really? Really? I misrepresent your position. <laughs> because you are a young guy. Okay, anyway. Okay, let's, let's see the hadith. The hadith, my friend, at the end says that your, your Muhammad agreed with him. He said, ah, you are right. Let's read the hadith. <laughs> Do you then blame me for an act which Allah has ordinated for me 40 years before he created me? Allah's messenger then said, This is how Adam came the better of Moses. This is how Adam got the better of Moses. So your prophet agreed that Adam was right. Then he takes another hadith and he misrepresents the hadith. Okay, now in this hadith, even Moses agree, 40 years. So now we have Adam and Moses. But uh, Dawa brother reads this. Um, uh, what is your opinion? How long Torah would, would have been written before I was created? Moses says 40 years before. Adam said, did you not see these words? Adam committed an error and he was enticed to do so. So the uh, Dawa brother says that Adam committed an error. No, you are misrepresenting the hadith. Because then he says, he, he Moses said, yes, whereupon he Adam said, do you then blame me for an act which Allah has ordinated for me 40 years before he created me? Allah's messenger said, this is how Adam came the better of Moses. In other words, Dawa brother, you misrepresented the hadith and you said that I misrepresented the hadith. Okay. Although the hadith is in front of us, how stupid you think we are. Ah, your followers maybe. Why you think your followers are stupid? 
even with the hadith in front of them, you think they won't read the hadith. Anyway, this hadith agrees with me, not with you. Okay, let's continue. And so reported it from Allah's messenger that a person performs deeds like the deeds of the people of paradise apparently before people. And he would be amongst the dwellers of hell. And a person acts apparently like the people of hell, but, in fact, he would be among the dwellers of paradise. So, people do deeds like the deeds of the people of paradise, yet they go to hell? Yes, because there are people who do deeds such as uh, people who give charity. Okay, but they have the wrong intention, they are doing it for show off, and hence they will go to hell. There are different hadiths that support that claim. And there are people who do such things of the people of hell, like they're, let's say they are stubborn or arrogant or something like that. But they're doing it with a good intention, and they will be in heaven. Because, for example, they are, you know, let's take a modern example. They are enforcing the law, okay, and they are, you know, being compulsive with the law but you're doing it for the better good okay you some people might say that they're doing the people or the uh, you know because they are forcing people this is an act of people of par hell but they're doing it for the good and they have the good intention so yeah so he doesn't understand this hadith yeah but how we understand this hadith you say i misunderstand this hadith. this hadith by itself this small sentence you are right but the context was before Okay, that's the same hadith, the same context, like the hadith we read before, where destiny overcomes. Like the other hadith said that people were acting like people of hell, acting like, okay, I acknowledge that. That doesn't mean they are for hell, they act like, I acknowledge that. But then the hadith continues, as we read previously, then destiny overcomes, Okay, that is the context of this hadith. This hadith is incomplete. That's, that's why you got away with it. But with the other context... Okay. Okay, so I give you this hadith. It doesn't matter, my friend. It's 54 hadiths. If one, you get away with it, doesn't matter. Okay, let's go to the next hadith. I said, Allah's messenger, there is happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise for it committed no sin nor has he reached the age when one can commit sin. He said, Aisha, peradventure, it may be otherwise, because God created for paradise those who are fit for it while they were yet in their father's loins and created for hell those who are to go to hell. He created them for hell while they were yet in their father's loins. So, uh, once again, buddy, uh, destined and by knowledge and they were created by his knowledge they weren't forced to go to hell or heaven they were destined it is no job or there is no compulsion in these hadith you need to show compulsion bro is getting annoying right now okay so he himself agreed that these hadith is not directly linked to free will uh, but he's trying to show that allah is or god is a sadist uh, which is you know not the topic at hand so that is a red herring fallacy Okay, I'm not going to entertain fallacious People points for that he's bringing forth. He's a sadist. So let's move on. Okay, in that sense, we what? Why you jumped the Aisha hadith? <laughs> Guys, this hadith was the strongest. There, there is a baby, and Aisha, a baby dies. Okay, and Aisha says to Muhammad, Muhammad, there is a gladness for this baby because it's, it's, it's for paradise. He, he died before it was able to commit sin. And Muhammad says, says to Aisha, No, Aisha, this baby, this one-year-old baby might go to hell. Okay, this is what the, the hadith says. And this guy jumped over this hadith. He started the hadith and then said about, Ah, the Socrates son accuses, me of, accuses Allah of being sadist. And he jumps over the hadith. That's ad an admission, my friend. You just admitted, my friend. Okay, you just admitted I was right. You jumped over the hadith. You tried to hide the hadith. Okay, you admitted, my friend. Why you, you are still a Muslim? Seriously, no. You just admitted, my friend. You just admitted that there is no free will in Islam. There is no compatibilism. 
you just admitted that in his, the hadith preach hard determinism. You just admitted that. Because what you did is that when the hadith went, when the heat came with a strong hadith, you jumped over the hadith. What's that, my friend? Should I continue? I'm kind of bored. Anyway, let's continue. That he made a system that will result to inevitable punishment. In other words, uh, predetermination. So I demonstrated my first point. Islamic scriptures reject free will. Okay, let's see how that follows. That does not follow. That's a non-secular fallacy as well. Okay, just because uh, he knows you will go to heaven or hell, and hence you will go to heaven or hell, or just because Allah prefers to forgive people, uh, it doesn't mean that he is a sadist. That's literally the opposite of what a sadist is. A sadist wants you to sin and he wants to punish you, but Allah has said that he, would, he loves forgiving you. So that does not fall under, you know, what a sadist is. It's a non-secular, it does not follow. Stop making fallacious arguments, which are, by the way, off-topic altogether. No, you have not. And here is why. Here is a clear verse that supports free will. Okay, for example, this verse. In chapter 18, verse 29. Uh, the truth from your Lord. Let anyone who wishes believe. And let anyone who wishes disbelieve. Whoever pleases who, uh, with his free will believe. And whoever disbelieves. So it, it clearly says with his free will believe or disbelieve. Another, another word. Indeed, we have guided him to, uh, him to stay away. He is ungrateful are grateful okay and here is another hadith this is for what your hands have sent before okay thank you for disproving hadith okay my friend the, the only thing you are showing now is that the hadith is contradictory even if we assume you are showing strong hadiths you do, in contradiction with me it doesn't you don't show if that is strong hadith okay i wish my friend I wish what you are showing now is strong hadith. Because I just had a debate trying to disprove the science of hadith. And that is a refutation of the science of hadith. So, okay, if one, one hadith says etsi, the other hadith says yuvetsi, and they are both strong, that means there is no more hadith. Okay, so, even if you have a, a, a chain a, a chain of narration and one hadith says black the other hadith says white that that again disproves islam because you necessarily need hadith to explain the quran okay so that disproves islam again however you take it my friend you disprove islam however you take it take it however you like my friend you are very lucky I didn't came to your YouTube channel. I cannot do that, my, by the way, because for some reason the stream yard doesn't work. I tried it. Doesn't recognize my camera and my microphone. But you are very lucky. <laughs> if you like, we can debate this subject on, on Discord. Okay, uh, th this is my, my proposal. Let's debate this subject on Discord. In the meanwhile... Okay, uh, maybe I will continue tomorrow because now I'm, I'm bored. Not you made some good arguments, that, but it's not your fault, my dear, uh, my dear young uh, friend. It's not your fault. Okay, Islam is that terrible. Okay, even if you were Einstein, you could you wouldn't a being able to do anything. Even if you were Einstein, not because you are not intelligent. Because Islam is so terrible. Okay. See ya.